Welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast, episode number six, iPad Alone, part two. This podcast is supported by the iPad Possibilities Podcast app, found in the App Store for $2.99. Get it today to support the show. Well, welcome, and this is the iPad Possibilities Podcast. I'm Tim, and I'm your host of this show, and this week I bring you the second half of an interview I did with Anthony Moody of iPadAlone.com, and the second half we delve more into the possibilities of the iPad, what applications will be developed for it, what uses will it have in the future, and simply where will computing go in the next 10 years, and where will the iPad be in the next 10 years, 5 years? and simply the direction of where our technology is leading us and the possibilities that will arise as a result of that. So without further delay, here is the second half of the interview I did with Anthony Moody of iPadAlone.com. What applications uh, do you really hope to see get developed? I know there's a lot of ideas out there, but what are the ones you're most excited about so far? Yeah, you know, there's a there's a screenwriting program called um, Final Draft, which is you know the sort of Microsoft Office of of screenwriting programs. Um, I don't do a heck of a lot of screenwriting, but it's really nice to be able to open scripts in the do, in the in, in the application in which they were created, so that right. if you have to do some tweaks, you can. So that's a big one, um, and the the company that makes it is pretty good about, um, you know, for example, for instance, keeping their Mac and windows versions, um, you know, at, at, at feature and version parity, um, you know, are they going to be interested in developing for the iPad? You know, I don't know. I hope so. And, and I've already sent them a, you know, a, an email request and we'll see what they do. So for me, that's a huge one. And another one, as I said, is a, is basically a way to notate, to annotate, um, you know, on the screen, i.e. on the page, um, PDFs, which is which is how scripts are predominantly passed around, um, and that you know for me that's I mean and there's I mean look there's obvious ones that we already have because they're already on the iPhone right like Skype and things like that yeah um, you know I sort of shudder to think but um, look if Microsoft wants to develop Office for the iPad I, I, probably at the end of the day I would get it because what I do find as as much as I am not a fan of office for Mac, you know, as, as, as much effort as they apparently expend to make it, um, work kind of seamlessly in a, in the PC cent- in the, in the windows centric world we live in, there are always documents I open where there's some, you know, Unicode thing where the fonts are all screwed up and the, the formatting is all mm-hmm. different and it, you know, it just doesn't play as nicely together as it should. Um, you know, when you try to go outside of office and and so you know if I find that on the iPad and and, and Microsoft releases a version of Office I'd, I'd probably you know <laughs> swallow it and 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 purchase that for those kinds yeah. of occasions. But hey, I'm I'm looking forward to trying. I I don't have iWorks on my laptop now, so it's going to be a whole new thing for me anyway. Sure. Um, but I'm I'm looking forward to trying that. Uh, and I you know I also look forward to some of the things we've already heard about, like the uh, the, the New York Times Reader app. Um, I, I expect we'll see, um, some pretty neat stuff as far as magazine subscriptions and newspaper subscriptions and things like that beyond just looking at them in a browser. Um, and then lastly, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that the Hulus of the world are going to see the light and, um, and if not dump flash, then at least have a, have a, a parallel, uh, interface that they offer for, for HTML5 or some other codec as YouTube has done to allow those to play on the iPad and, and also the iPhone. I, you know, um, I'm frankly surprised they've not done so already. It makes me wonder if there isn't a, a, a licensing issue with, uh, with the content providers. Um, uh, maybe the content providers are, are kind of holding them back, but, um, you know, to me, that would obviously be a, a, a wonderful, uh, development to, to have yeah. an official, official announcement of a, of a Hulu app. We actually heard rumors yesterday about a Hulu app coming to the iPad or a, you know, capable format that would be, you know, HTML5 or whatever. 
Exactly, exactly. And and look, I think that that transition is is inevitable. I mean, ultimately, Flash is proprietary and HTML5 is not. And so, um, you know, between Apple and Google, who has similar, similarly shown a uh, to, uh, to, to embrace Flash, or more accurately has shown a propensity to avoid it at, at all costs um, in, in favor of open standards, uh, you know, I think speaks volumes. Um, and I think ultimately, too, Microsoft has no particular um, allegiance to, to Adobe. Um, now, they'd probably prefer to you know, push their own standards, but I think they'd rather have an open standard than somebody else's closed standard. Yeah. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I think that's inevitable. Um, and, and, you know, Apple's probably about as forward thinking a company as, as we have in the space right now. I mean, they were the first to ditch, you know, floppy drives as a standard feature and everybody thought that that was lunacy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now there isn't a machine on earth that has one and um increasingly machines don't have um any kind of cd or dvd drive and i think that there's that that's also the future you know and i i don't think it's a, i don't think it's a distant future i think it's you know i mean look there's obviously there's not a there's not a there's not a spinning drive uh, uh dvd there's not a dvd reader in a netbook today right so and then you know they're taking whatever they have 5 10% of the market already mm-hmm. um and things like the ipad uh, the MacBook Air and other, you know, sort of thin and light notebooks. Um, you know, it's 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 where we're going. Um, so, yeah, they actually made the uh, MacBook Air, the external super drive, work with the Mac Mini server. So I think they're already kind of positioning themselves to use that one hardware piece to work with all the Macs in the future that won't have CD drives. It, exactly, and it, and it kind of gets to that fundamental question of, you know, how often do you need to, to, to do X, right? Whatever X is. So if X is how often do you need to put a CD or DVD into your, you know, your computer, quote unquote, for me, the answer is almost never. I, I can't remember the last time I bought shrink wrapped software. I mean, it was probably a, 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 an, an Apple OS update on the iPad. That's not an, you know, an issue because they download into iTunes on, on the iMac and you sync and you're done. Um, as far as CDs and DVDs, I don't physically buy them anymore. Um, I've, I've long since ripped my collection, you know, look, and, and am I, am I the norm? You know, no, I know a lot of people use their, their laptops to watch DVDs on the plane. Although if people were smart, they would rip the DVD and watch it as a file instead of, uh, you know, as a spinning, yeah. uh, media and, and have much, much greater battery <laughs> performance. Um, but you know, even that's a, what do you do that? 1% of the time your computer's on maybe. So it's a classic thing where, you know, I think the iPad and, and, and where the iPad is going is all about what most of us do most of the time. And if it can do that and also, you know, have sufficiently good either workarounds or, or um, you know, iterations of those other things that we occasionally, occasionally do. You know, as I said, I occasionally will open up Final Draft and, and, and do some work on a, uh, on a script. Um, you know, well, what I do that once a month, maybe, you know, so, I mean, am I going to have a laptop instead of a, of an iPad for something I do once a month? You know, absolutely not. You know, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. And the other thing is too, you know, you get to be a little bit of an old dog and you, you get set in your ways, but I, I, I also am very, very cognizant of what I do with my computer. And, you know, there's not a heck of a lot that I see that I cannot do on the iPad. Can I do a video chat? No. Can I do chat? Yes. You know, so, so is that enough for now for me? Yes. Particularly when I don't do, it's not like I do video chats 10 times a day, right? I may do mm-hmm. one, one or two per business trip. And by the way, that's home to my family. That's not, you know, I mean, occasionally I'll do a, a work related video chat, but, but there again, it's rare for me. So, you know that that's kind of how I made the assessment. I mean, I, I see I see a device that's a heck of a lot thinner and lighter than anything I have now. That's capable enough for me to do what I need to do almost all of the time, and that's only going to get more and more capable over time. And I think the iPhone experience has shown us that pointedly. I mean, it, you know, the the iPhone as it is today is orders of magnitude more capable than it was when, when Apple introduced it. And I, not only do I think we're going to see that with the iPad, I think it's going to happen faster with mm-hmm. the iPad. 
because we're already starting from a from such an advanced uh, state based on where the iPhone is today. Right. What do you see in the next operating system 4.0 that either pertains to the iPad or what would you like to see in particular uh, besides multitasking, which we all expect to be in there some way? Yeah, exactly. I, I, you know, multitasking feels like it's going to be the sort of the 900 pound gorilla. Um, I would expect um, Apple to begin to get uh, to marry four point and, and uh, four point oh to more advanced hardware. I mean, we already had that with the three GS with the Compass, for instance. I think there's going to be more of that. I think you know whether it's you know two and three and four finger gestures, which you know for sure are going to live on the iPad, may also you know in in um, modest doses live on an iPhone. Uh, buttons in the you know off the screen area, you know in the in the in the zone sort of to the south and the north of the screen, um, maybe to invoke hot corners or, or, or things like that, sort of expose style. Um, so I think, I think some of the, the, the software is going to require hardware and we're going to see kind of an increased, I don't want to call it a forced migration, but I mean, Apple's going to start to, I mean, we, we already have it right in, 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 in a me, in measure, I think Apple's going to increasingly, um, kind of push the boundaries and, and kind of, kind of um, sort of make people uh, upgrade their hardware in order to take advantage of, of all the cool stuff that the latest software can do. Um, you know, beyond multitasking, uh, the thing, I, what, what's most fascinating to me kind of is that question of, of what else are we going to see? I mean, I feel like we're, we're, we're getting awfully close to where there's almost no appreciate. I mean, once you have multitasking, we're getting awfully close to where there's no appreciable difference between the iPhone OS slash iPad OS and, you know, full, full blown OS X, yeah. um, you know, a file structure of some kind. I think Apple again is focused on the user experience. I feel like, you know, this idea of nested folders and hierarch hierarchical folders is never going to appear in the iPhone OS in a way that, you know, real techie leaning people want. And I, I understand that, you know, but I, I think that's a paradigm that we've gotten used to and therefore are, you know, are happy with, but I don't think it's because it's necessarily the best kind of way to be right. It's like, if I'm, if I'm in a, if I'm, if I'm searching for music and I open up spotlight, I mean, yeah, are there ways to prioritize and focus just on, you know, certain file extensions and so on, you know, yeah. But at the, at the end of the day, if I'm looking for music, all that other stuff is just kind of technological noise, right? Like file type extensions and what folder it's in and what, what directory it's in. I don't care about that, right? What I care about is where's – I want my music. Yeah. You know, so, so I think if – I think if, if – and I think they can, where I think we're going to get is this idea that you'll have very easy access to the information and kinds of information – that makes sense in the context of whatever you're doing at the time. Um, so, you know, when I'm, when I'm looking for music, I'm not going to be presented with PDFs. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't, it, it, there's no reason to be presented with PDFs. And I think, and I think Apple gets that for, you know, um, uh, for, for, for where we're going and to be, to kind of break out of where we are. I think the file system, as we think, I think multitasking too, the way we think of it today, is kind of going to go away and become um, much more about, you know, what you can do as opposed to how it actually works. And I think a lot of I think a lot of people in criticizing the iPad have have gotten bogged down in in how it will work as opposed to what it's actually allowing you to do. Um, and so, you know, for four point um, also as far as the the iPad. I would love, love wireless syncing, um, you know, at least over Wi-Fi, if not over 3G. Yeah, that would be pretty crazy if you could be on the road with 3G access, remoting into your iMac and syncing new media to it on, like, from a different state. Right. Um, that would be, it would be crazy. <laughs> and, and look, I think, I certainly think a year from now when the Rev B device comes out with an LTE radio, um, I think for sure we're going to get it. At that point, if not now, uh, in, in 4.0, um, you know, wireless syncing is something I think we would all really, really, really love. Um, it also opens up a lot of possibilities for cloud syncing, 
and I'm, I'm thinking of media here. I mean, obviously, I already have mobile me, and and so my my personal data lives in a cloud. But my you know my terabyte of of, of other stuff, my media, um, I'd love it in the cloud. And I you know I to not have to worry about you know the redundancy and backing it up here and having that be on somebody else's watch, who's frankly much more capable uh, than I. I I have no problem with that. Um, in fact, I would probably embrace it fairly fairly quickly. Um, so that would be a really cool thing. Um, wireless, uh, wireless syncing, wireless cloud storage of media for, for both for syncing and for streaming, you know, and again, it may, it may require faster radios than we have now. Um, so maybe we have to wait another year for that. We'll see. Yeah. Do you see any hardware additions to the iPad coming out, such as like, say a scanner that plugs in via the dock and you have a scanning app that could completely replace that need in a laptop? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think that that's going to depend a lot on what Apple does and doesn't allow via the 30 pin connector, uh, you know, and I that is something that I think the jailbreaking community would be a likelier source at least in the in the near term. Um, you know, basically <laughs> Uh, for instance, having a USB jack to go to a, a, a printer or a scanner. Now, I do think whether it's you know via Bonjour networking or Bluetooth, you know, we're going to be able to print and scan from a an iPad. I, I, I think I think certainly printing. It's sort of silly to think otherwise. I mean, you know, Apple didn't specifically um, demonstrate that. But I would frankly be shocked, shocked if you could not. And actually, v- via apps, you already can. I mean, there's an HP app that allows me to print on my HP printer from on my network from my iPhone. Um, so, you know, worst case, you solve it, it with that kind of, uh, of approach. I would be shocked if Apple hasn't really kind of thought about this. Now, the only kind of risk is... If Apple intentionally wants to sort of hamstring the device so that you cannot do what I intend to do, which is use it as your primary device, Mm -hmm. um, and they want to, you know, have clear kind of product differentiating boundaries, um, and, you know, look, will that be a monster bummer? Yeah, but I think that's a classic, uh, perfect sort of example of what the jailbreaking community would be perfect for. Yeah. To solve, and in um, preview and image capture, I've seen in Snow Leopard at least they've added shared scanners. So any scanner hooked up to your network, you can actually scan right there on whatever Mac you're on. Yeah, you know it's interesting that you mentioned that because um, my, we have a, a, a an all-in-one device that is network specifically network capable, which is why I got it. There are a lot of scanner. There are a lot of all-in-one devices that can print on the network but not scan. Um, and which is frustrating. Anyway, I, I bought a model that you know is designed out of the box to to be able to scan over a network. And recently, my um, the 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 for whatever reason the device the HP device manager and driver it's not finding the scanner on the network. And I I made no changes. It just all of a sudden just doesn't want to find it. And I've troubleshot it. I've done all sorts of things short of you know sending it to HP. Yeah. I- image capture, on the other hand, finds it no problem as, as you pointed out, a shared device. So that's really interesting because you know, I'm already sort of doing that with my laptop. And I, I agree with you. It, I, other than Apple choosing not to do it, I can't see a reason why we don't get it on the iPad. Um, maybe we don't get it on day one. But I'm I'm guessing there's a lot more going on there in terms of what's already on the iPad in in 3.2, then then Steve led on during the if I can call him by his first name yeah. um, in, in that keynote. I mean, it was to me it was almost like an intentional. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you something that people are going to say is just a big iPod Touch because I think if I show you something more than that, you're not going to get it. You're not going to be able to get your arms around it. It's going to so blow your minds that you're going to be left scratching your head. And I think a, almost a conscious choice was made to show us something we could really relate to now as iPhone and iPod Touch users. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. nobody nobody who has an iPhone or an iPod 
and, and, and maybe not anybody else, but certainly those, none of those tens of millions of people will need any training whatsoever to use an iPad like a pro. Yeah. Um, I think if he had simultaneously introduced a new OS with all kinds of new features and all kinds of new functionality, I think it would have drawn focus away from the iPad in a certain way um, and also raised more questions than could be answered in that forum. So I think mm-hmm. we're, we're going to get a, a 3.2 kind of um, – and again, it may, it may be 3.2, it may be 4.0, but I think we're going to get, a, at the very least, a 3.2 type uh, OS show um, that, that reveals a heck of a lot more in terms of answering these, what are ultimately basic questions like, you know, how am I going to get my files? How am I going to print them? How, you know, how am I going to access them from one application to another? Um, all that kind of stuff. I think we're going to see, I think they just wanted to focus on, you know, keeping it simple and adding adding complexity um, over time in a way in a ma- in manageable doses, which is uh, you know how they've handled the iPhone so far as well. Yeah, what markets um, outside of film and whatnot do you see the iPad really being a huge component in in the future? I see it being huge in education. I see no reason to believe that, uh, or I know I see no reason not to believe that um, you know. Textbooks are going to be available. They will be able to be annotated the way we do now with highlighters and things like that. I think that'll be an, an, a, a, a typically Apple-y um, easy thing to do. So I think it'll be huge in education. Um, you know, in terms of what you, what you think about most students, again, most students, most of the time doing with their laptops, they take them to class, they take notes on them. Maybe they, you know, obviously they surf the internet on, they use it for music. Again, I, iPad perfect for that um, at at a you know a, a fraction of the price and a fraction of the weight. Um, I think it, it's going to be embraced uh, in a big way uh, in that regard. I think um, the media consumption, particularly for kids. I mean, I see a lot of kids who have iPod touches, you know, in cars and on planes and things like that, so that they can watch movies and and, and occupy themselves. And I'm thinking even little kids sometimes do that. Yeah. Um, you know, in fact, I didn't sell, we didn't sell our old iPhones when we got the three GSs. We sort of retired them as little movie players for, for our kids, you know, when we don't, they don't, they're young enough that we don't kind of, we don't give them to them full time, but you know, certainly on a long car drive or a plane trip, um, you know, it's a perfect tool for that. So would it, wouldn't, wouldn't an iPad be a much more, um, enjoyable way to do that? And, and I think, you know, for sure. And, What's interesting is that I think we're going to see a, a, a sort of um, a really kind of a U-shaped um, uh, curve in terms of which device people buy. I think they're going to sell a boatload of 16 gig Wi-Fi only models for 500 bucks, and then they're going to sell the 64 gig 3G version for 829 at the other end. I, the middle versions for my money, don't provide a heck of a lot of compelling differentiation. I mean, the difference between six, you know, I, I think you either want three, want slash need 3G or not. And I think if you need slash want 3G, you're also going to be using your device more and out and about more. So you want more, want and need more storage. Or it's the kind of thing you're going to kind of be walking around the house with and not be on the road with that much and so on. And, and it's going to be much more of a, the thing, a thing you, you kind of sync more frequently and manage the, the media on board more frequently. So I think, I, you know, so I could see people having a couple three just sort of lying around the house. And at 500 bucks, when, you know, when you think about that compared to a $2,500 MacBook Pro, you know, it's a pretty interesting value proposition. And then especially, you know, once, once we get um, – I mean, it, it wasn't explicitly stated, but I have to assume there's some kind of, you know, um, AirTunes capability as as we can stream to an uh, an Apple TV. Why yeah. can't why 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 would we think that we're not going to be able to stream media to our iPad? So all of a sudden, yeah, having a bunch of iPads around is is a pretty cool thing. So I, I think just the home kind of home media consumption. Um, you know, especially in this age of a, of a million channels and nothing on, you know, it's almost impossible for four people to decide what to watch. 
well, you know, Matt, maybe you don't have to anymore, you know, um, and instead of retiring to different rooms, at least we can all sort of be together and, and have retained some sort of social experience to, to, to our media consumption. Um, and then, uh, you know, it, it, for light kind of, uh, um, oh, by the way, not in education, I think also on the, on the, on the teaching side, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, projecting your PowerPoints and, or, or your, uh, key, your keynote documents from, from an iPad, I think that's a huge, um, opportunity. I mean, it's huge in terms of use u- utility. I don't know how many, I mean, it, you know, even if, if you took every, Every college professor and high school teacher in the country, you know, I don't know how many thousands of people you wind up with, but so I don't mean huge in a in a in a market opportunity sense, but in terms of you know what it could do for those folks, I think it's pretty huge. Um, and I think I think basic office working. I mean, and again, getting back to the most of the people most of the time, do you re- do you really need more than that? And then an interesting thing about that is that because you know people, a lot of people grouse about the sort of the closed. Apple ecosystem and how much control Apple exerts over that. Well, I think what will be interesting is whether Apple extends that kind of capability to, to IT managers, right? Like if you could, if you could distribute um, iPads to your, to your sales force um, and, and control kind of on a global level, you know, what apps they can and can't install and so on. I mean, in a way you have a, you have an opportunity for a much more, um, IT management friendly <laughs> device yeah. than you do with an, a, a quote unquote open PC or or even a, you know a, 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 a Mac um, laptop. So I think I think the opportunities are large and larger than people. And I, well, it, there's the eBooks too. I mean, I think look, nobody anybody that buys a Kindle DX now over a four ninety nine Wi Fi iPad is just <laughs> nuts in the head unless they really 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 are. Um, are e ink you know friendly and l c d averse yeah um, i i just don't I, to me the kindle d x ceases to have a reason for existing at this point at this price point right well where do you see um the ipad moving uh one year down the line five years and ten years a decade later well, I do think a year from now we're going to have a front-facing camera. We'll have faster radios. We'll be doing video chats, you know, via Skype, iChat, and the like. Um, I, I think for sure, for sure. I think maybe not in a year, but probably before five years, um, they will allow essentially full phone functionality into an iPad, so that you can carry it in your bag, and then maybe just with a Bluetooth headset, you know. Um, um, speak on it, or maybe you know, uh, uh, allow not only data tethering but voice tethering, right? So that you know, only what you're only carrying around one phone radio with one phone plan. Um, and maybe I'm being short sighted here. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's no such thing as a minutes plan any anymore in the future. Maybe everything is data, right? Wireless is so ubiquitous and so fast that it it it, it sort of doesn't matter. But in terms of the iPad itself. For sure, cameras. For sure, faster radios. For sure, much more storage. For sure, you know, an explosion of productivity apps. Uh, app, I know, sorry, let me call them applications instead of apps. And I think, as I said, we're going to get a convergence over time as the iPad OS and its capabilities um, grow and expand, and the OS X as we think of it today begins to behave and feel from a user experience standpoint a lot more like we think of the 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 iPhone iPad OS today and i think maybe not in 5 years time but i do believe that in 10 by 10 years time there will not be a distinction there will be a single uh unified and uh, you know you people can debate the kind of the different the distinctions between the versions of OS X on a phone and on a laptop today I don't think that debate will be there in the future. I don't think there will be a distinction. You know, smartphones are already incredibly powerful, and I think we're just at the beginning of, you know, what we can do in terms of of, of the hardware that the, the that's going to be, the, you know, the CPUs that are going to be inside these things. Um, I think the iPad gets more and more and more powerful. And the, again, just the distinctions. First, they blur, and then they're literally going to disappear. I don't know if that's version, you know, 
compared to if we're on the brink of four. I don't know if that's six, seven, or ten, or twenty, but I mean, it's it's going to happen. I, I think ultimately there's going to be one quote unquote OS, and I think it's going to be when the OS disappears for all but the most. Essentially, for anyone other than a developer, I think the OS is going to just disappear. Yeah, because because ultimately that's just technological noise for how stuff is working, as opposed to well, what can I do and what can I, what, what am I able to do and, and how can I do it? You know, um, and I think they're they're going to be ubiquitous. You know, I think um, I think <laughs> we're all going to have them. Um, I think what you can get for a doll for the dollar is going to shock us and continue to shock us. Um, and I, and I think that, you know, we're going to begin to get all sorts of cool stuff like, you know, the ability to read a gesture in space, right? So you don't even have to touch the screen anymore. You just kind of make a hand gesture and a camera or cameras on the device understand what you've just done and what you're looking to do, turn the page on a book or, you know, flick through a, a, a web page to scroll or, or so on, you know, that kind of stuff I, I think is, um, that's probably a five year, a five year scenario, you know, somewhere between five and 10. Um, and you know, I think the, <laughs> what, what we, th- you know, what we think about is the spec sheet will, will just can absolutely blow, blow, blow us away you know, multi cores and batteries that last for days. And I do think, by the way, it's a separate thing from Apple, although Apple has made some interesting strides recently with their sort of their built in batteries. Um, I do think, you know, increasing amounts of dollars and R and D are going to be put toward, and we're beginning, beginning, beginning to see some advances in lithium ions driven mostly by, um, cars and, and, and these giant hybrid you know, battery packs yeah. that, that, that are required for these cars, you know, the issue with laptops is that, and phones and the like, is that, look, if it lasts a day, you know, more or less in, in kind of regular usage, that's really enough, right? Cause it's rare that you're, you know, unless you're camping, right. You can always more, always more or less plug, plug the thing in every night. But look, if a car can't take you five, four, or five, six hundred miles the way a, 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 a fuel efficient gasoline engine can on a tank of gas, well, that's that means that 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 car, that product, is not functional as we people use cars today, and right. that's and that's a problem, right? So all of a sudden, in a way that's in my mind sort of doesn't exist. I mean, look, more battery life on laptops and the like for now are more nice to have than absolute must have. Right. Mm -hmm. But for a car, I mean, if an electric car can only go 200, 300 miles now, you kind of got to figure out a way to get it to go four or 500 miles to, 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 to be a car as we think of it today. Right. So I think there's a whole new impetus. Um, not to mention the whole, the, the increasing sort of, uh, push for, for green technology in general batteries and, and what we get out of them, I think, five, but particularly 10 years from now is going to blow our minds. So, you know, like a Kindle where you, you literally can use it for two weeks, you know, before you have to recharge. I mean, that's pretty astonishing, uh, for any kind of electronic device as simple as it is. I don't, I don't think there's any reason to believe we're not going to have the same, um, the same thing with a, with an iPad and, and it probably will have, uh, incorporated wireless, wireless charging by that point too. Um, so I think a lot of the, what we think of the limitations that sort of tether us today, I I think they're just going to all disappear. And I think, um, you know, the naysayers are going to, they're going to have a lot of crow to eat and they'll point to something and say, well, you know, they finally released, uh, you know, um, they finally allowed multitasking or, you know, Hulu finally went to HTML5 or H.264 or whatever. I mean, they'll always point to some, you know, flip switch that was flipped that made them a believer. Um, you know, obviously I already am a believer and I think all of this kind of stuff is inevitable. Um, and I think that, I think the thing is more powerful out of the box than people are giving it credit for. And I think it's going to get infinitely more powerful, much faster than a lot of people seem to think. And, uh, you know, time, time will tell, but, um, that's, that's what I anticipate. What do you think is needed to, actually get rid of the computers we know today. They cut the cord. Mm. Um, for example, the Apple TV version 1, it required you to have a Mac that syncs or streams to it. Right. Now with version 2 and 3, um, you're able to access everything on the Apple TV without 
needing a computer. Right. I think it's it's a chicken and egg that's slowly, you know, progressing. Um, it's a combination of um, uh, functionality in our devices, right? Like, uh, so for an iPad, for instance, the ability to segment a portion of the memory so that you could download the OS update right onto an iPad, right? That's, that's a, that's, that is physically possible if Apple chose to make it so, right? Yeah. You currently cannot do that, but there's no technical reason you cannot do that. You absolutely could segment the memory, um, you know, dump the, the, put the OS in that box and then, and then, and then do what you, what you do now all on the capability on the hardware side. On the other side is, um, a parallel sort of development that's happening, of course, is that, you know, we get more and more bandwidth for lower and lower prices. You know, Google made their announcement yesterday that they're going to bring, you know, super duper high speed. I guess it was gig speeds to gigabyte speeds to, you know, half a million people just as a kind of, uh, almost like a, a, a straw man to sort of see what happens. And, and, you know, they talked about it being a little bit of market research, a little bit of a, of a spur to the marketplace, you know, Fios is doing interesting things, but I mean, Google's talking about networking that is an order of magnitude faster. Um, and what that can then also foster is the ability to, I mean, look, to, to, to remotely store and stream music. I mean, it's already happening, right? I mean, whether it's Pandora, which is, which is just streaming or, you know, um, the Lala's of the world that, which Apple acquired, which allowed you to store your, your own collection remotely and, and stream it. Music is easier, right? Cause it's smaller. The compression, the, the codecs are, are, are pretty decent, you know, especially the way we listen to music today. We don't do sort of critical listening, right? Like, like, like decent, comp- you know, normal compression is, you know, it sounds quote unquote fine for most people in most environments. Um, you know, video is a little different. It's already way more bandwidth intensive. Um, number one and number two, we've all just bought these shiny new high def televisions and front projection systems and things like that, where you really can tell the difference. Yeah. And then, particular with you know hard media like Blu-ray, which is so incredibly high quality, you know, to to store to <laughs> just just to, just to store a Blu-ray remotely, right? So call it five gigs, nice round number. Um, or, or 20 gigs, you know, for something insane and, and long and with lots of, you know, um, uh, extras and things like that. To stream that today sort of kind of doesn't work, right? Like the closest, yeah. the closest we have is, uh, is Vudu. Um, and they, they do something very clever, um, which is essentially uh, um, the first minute or two of most of the movies already lives on the drive. They send you. Um, and then they have a kind of very clever uh, – uh, peer-to-peer network among the devices, so that you're pulling snippets not just from a, the Voodoo Central server. You're you're pulling it from from the Voodoo Central server and little snippets from you know almost Napster style from from or or um, uh, not Napster style. Um, one of the torrents. I can't remember which which one did this, but one of the one of the um, I believe now defunct um, file sharing systems you know, basically was so decentralized that you could, you could download half a file from one, one spot and half a file from another in parallel, as opposed to kind of linearly from a single spot. And they, you know, they have a a codec called HDX, which is, uh, which looks extremely good and is, is certainly from a streaming standpoint, uh, slash download standpoint, as close as is currently available to, to Blu-ray. But, you know, on the on the nicest rigs to even somewhat discerning eyes, there you know, there's a visual visible difference between that and 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 Blu-ray. Um when we can stream Blu-ray quality, um, you know, the need for hard media goes away. Oh, and, and by the way, now it's gonna be when we can stream 3D Blu-ray quality. Yeah. That's that's sort of what's next, right? The need for hard media absolutely disappears for all but the the collectors among us, and I think we're already you know I think what what people i mean i'm you're 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 your age i'm my age and and you know i i think the i think the the the, the hard media collecting is some is a generational thing, and I think twenty years from now like my kids growing up now they're not going to buy any physical stuff 
for media. What you right. know, they're they're just they're just not. I mean, maybe a cup of book here, a, a Blu-ray there, but I mean, that's going to be really the. I mean, it's already the exception for me. For for kids, it's like they're like, well, why would I have a stack of DVDs or CDs? That makes no sense to me. Like, I don't, I don't even know what, well, like what that is, you know, yeah, like, how do I listen to this? How do I listen to this? Right. I don't have any, any slots to put this in right now. Um, my, 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 my netbook doesn't have it. My, my air doesn't have it. My iPad doesn't have it. And why, why bother, you know? And I, I get the arguments. I get the collecting, I get the quality, I get all that, but it, it, those arguments are going to go away in time and, you know, it's happening, right? It's, it's, kind we're kind of ready for it for music if we want to embrace it and for video i I think it happens faster than than we expect so i think you get the device you get the device the capabilities on on the device side um and then you get the you get the bandwidth on the on the sort of the supply side and then you get the services right and and you know of course ultimately you know apple um, is going to be among the many companies that provide these kind of you know massive locker boxes where you know you purchase something once and you get to use it on any of your devices anytime you want you know and there's that that's the that's the the I I believe the sort of the undeniable way of the future um, and and you know that's that's what I think it, it is required for us to to really cut the cord. Um, you know, and it's interesting too, thinking about printers and scanners. I mean, hey, look, in an ideal world, we have part of the way we cut the cord from printers and scanners is not printing and scanning so much. Yeah. Right? Like just share files. You know? Share files and and you know, maybe um, you know, I mean, just the idea of a business card. Maybe there's no physical business cards anymore. And, you know, maybe I mean, it's funny, one of the things that the palm, the very original <laughs> palm uh pilots were so good at were, you know, beaming your business card to somebody else. And yeah, right. I know there, yeah. there's an app on the iPhone. You can get to do that. But I mean, I think it's called Handshake. But th- there's got to be better, easier ways to do all that kind of stuff, right? So to just minimize the amount of paper that ge- gets generated. Receipts, right? You go to an Apple store, you don't have to walk out with a paper receipt. They can email you one. You know, I, that's, yeah. that's, this is the, we're only at the beginning of that process. Um, and you know, as I, as I look around and I'm, I'm kind of like surrounded by, by, by stacks of paper, it, it, it's hard to imagine, but you know, so was the mouse before the mouse was invented. You know what I mean? Like we're, yeah. we're, we're going to get there. Um, and it's, and it's just, it's just a process, but I, I think, you know, I think it's, it's, it's inevitable and I think it's going to be faster than, than, uh, than people think. Yeah. What kind of prep work um, will you be undertaking before the iPad comes out so you'll be ready to fully integrate on day one? Yeah, one of the, one of the things I, uh, I'm really going to focus on is um, uh, my file management. I mean I have I, – I don't know how many gigs of, of stuff on my laptop. I kind of got to sort – go through and figure out you know, what are my kind of mission critical things. You know, It's the, the – the, the, you know, executed contracts of, for all the films I've done, the, the scripts that I'm, you know, actively working on developing, um, you know, some household stuff. Uh, I'm not going to just delete the rest. It'll probably live, you know, I'll dump it to the iMac just to a, a big folder, you know, for kind of archival purposes, um, for a just in case kind of scenario. And if I need something, I'll, I'll quickly drag it to mobile me and, and, and boom, it'll be on the iPad. Um, so that's one thing I really want to kind of rationalize because I don't want to, um, of my 64 gigs, I don't want to take up 20 gigs of like miscellaneous documents. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, another thing I'm going to be doing that I, I sort of have to wait on uh, a little bit is thinking a little bit more about the way I use email today. I'm a, um, habitual chronic email archiver. I have, <laughs> folders and subfolders where I file everything. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like the anti Gmail in terms of like threaded conversations and you just sort of archive everything and you can search for stuff. I mean, I know you can do that. Um, but sometimes I just prefer to scroll through a list to kind of look, find what I'm looking for. Um, I have here, let me see how quickly I can, uh, I can get my, my mail client to tell you, um, how many, how many, 
messages are in my primary account wherein I file everything. But I mean, it's, it's in the hundreds of thousands of messages. And the issue with that is that, you know, on a laptop, it's, and it's, it's on IMAP, so it's not super local resource intensive. But I don't know if mail on the iPad is going to choke on all that. You know, on data. all that. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I'm going to find that out other than perhaps just experimenting, which, which you know, for sure I will. Um, but I may, you know, if I, if I learn somehow and, and maybe because I'm getting a 3G model, maybe I'll learn from the Wi-Fi folks, um, you know, what, what mail really is and isn't so capable of. I may, I may do some real archiving, like pare down, you know, get rid of a lot of the, the stuff that's just old and out of date. Um, you know, strip attachments off emails and, and put them all in a folder somewhere. Um, so that, you know, so, so that's kind of, um, th- those are the very basic things. I mean, and then other than that, just continue to, uh, uh, to scour for, for information, you know, whether via the SDK and just keep track of news announcements and so on. So that I'm as ready as I can be, you know, I'll, I'll probably order the bag to more or less arrive around the same time as the, the iPad itself. Um, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's, you know, that, that's basically it. It's kind of a neat thing. I mean, I don't anticipate having to do a heck of a lot on my end before, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, certainly sooner or later there will be transition stuff to do as I, I realize, oh, I've, I've forgotten to, you know, account for this or think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll, you know, happily cross that bridge when I get to it. Um, but really mail and then, and then file um, uh, rationalization. And, you know, I mean, frankly, it's something I should already have done, right? I mean, there's no reason so much of the stuff that I have I have because I have essentially unlimited storage, right? Yeah. So it's a little like a bag, right? You have a big bag, you carry a lot of stuff. I have, you know, a giant hard drive. I just crammed full of stuff that I basically never access. You know, it's like I want to have it, but I don't need to have it with me at all times. Yeah. Um, and I Evernote, um, Evernote's a pretty great solution for getting rid of the file structure and just storing everything and Evernote as attachments and accessing them as you need them. Yeah, I have to look into Evernote. You know, we I, we, we used Evernote as a little bit of prep for this call and um, this podcast. And I, I, I I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to say it was kind of new to me. I'd never had a real call to use it before. I've used Google Docs and, and uh, worked on some collaborative stuff in that kind of sandbox. Um, I'm definitely going to look into Evernote and also just kind of monitor – I, you know, I think services like that are, they're obviously great and I think they can only get much more capable if they're closely and thoughtfully, uh, paired with, um, with applications and services that are made for devices like the iPad. So, you know, I'm really, I mean, I use, I use mobile me now mostly to as a, for my address book and calendar. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I have an iDisc, but it's not the way my world works, I don't kind of have a, a big need to worry about what's on my iDisc and, and managing that. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if that becomes my primary focus for storage. Um, if, if, if Apple chooses to make, you know, the way the iPad kind of interfaces with the world in terms of files is via your iDisc on, on mobile me. Um, and if that's the case, you know, I'm focusing more on that or on an Evernote or on a Google Docs, you know, depending on what overall solution um, seems like it'll work best for me. And in general, my bias is toward Apple solutions just because I feel like, you know, in the long term, in terms of the value proposition, it's probably the safest thing to do. Um, because once you're in a system, you it's hard to get out of the system. It's it's hard to get out. I mean, can you do it? Yeah. I mean, and I've I've thought about going to uh, to using Google for my calendar, my contacts, because um, I do have a Gmail account, but it's not my primary mail account. Um, you know, but so far it kind of you know Apple Apple Mail, Apple Calendar, and Apple 
uh, uh, address book work really well for me with mobile me and my iPhone. And I anticipate that to also be the case on the iPad. So, um, yeah. So whether, whether, whether the mobile me I disc is, is kind of where I, where I, where I focus my, 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 my files remains to be seen. So I'll, I'll be checking out, um, Evernote and, and things of that nature as, as time goes on. Yeah. So I think that's where we should leave it off for today. Great. And um, we'll come back, I believe, in May. You're getting the 3G version of the iPad. Yes, I am. That was also a, a ultimately easy decision because, you know, it's, it's, it, the instances are rare. But where I need it, I really, really, really need it. And, and it's for business purposes, so I have to have it. Yeah. Um, so that was an easy decision. So, yeah, I'm getting the 3G, and um, we'll see how things go. Okay, cool. And uh, – where can people find you um, if they want more information about what you're doing? Well, I uh, I decided pretty pretty early that I was going to blog about it. You know, I'm a semi active commenter on on Mac Rumors, um, but particularly in the early going, the the tenor of the conversations there are just uh, not not always so fun to engage in. There are a lot of people that are pretty close minded about their, their views of the, of the iPad on the negative side. And maybe I'm equally so on the positive side. Yeah. It's um, the geek community there. So yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. It, well, it, exactly. They're, they're certainly not average Joe's. And I just decided, you know, I, I want a place where I can kind of go on at greater length than the forums provide. So I started a blog called iPad alone.com. Um, and, um, you know, I try to post a, uh, well, since the announcement, I don't know. I've maybe made fifteen or so posts, and uh, you know, try to try to sort of talk about a, a new aspect or issue every every few days. Um, and and what's been nice is that you know, between the rumors and and the things trickling out of the SDK and announcements from developers and so on, there has been something kind of new or different or interesting to talk about every few days. Um, and hopefully that'll continue, you know, right up right up on through the launch. And then you know, once the launch comes, I'm going to be blogging about my experience with the iPad and living with it as my primary computer, replacing my MacBook Pro uh, on that blog. And I'm going to be doing it from the iPad exclusively. So that'll be fun. And then as far as my day job, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a movie producer. My company is called Indalo. It's an Indalo Productions and, you know, it's an, it's an easy Google. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. And, you know, we, we're, we're, we're a growing, uh, growing company and we have grand ambitions. So hopefully you'll see more of us on that side as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time with me this morning. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. It's fun to, fun to chat. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. So that was the discussion Anthony and I had on the iPad and using it as your sole computing device. Anthony and I will speak again after the iPad is released. So expect another uh, podcast episode or two on our second discussion, which will take place uh, later this year. You can find Anthony once again at iPadAlone.com. And you can find this show in iTunes, on the web at iPadPossibilities.com, and on Facebook by searching iPad Possibilities. I would also love your feedback at iPadPossibilities at gmail.com and your audio feedback at 209-542-iPad. That's 209 542 Four seven two three. Thanks for listening, and this is the iPad Possibilities Podcast. We will speak again.